now that you're familiar with the law of demand and understand how changes in the price of something affect how much demand we have for it, providing that all other factors remain equal, it's time to look what happens when one of those factors does change. Remember, this ceteris paribus thing, it's just a learning tool to help us focus on one thing at a time, on our way to understanding the bigger picture. Now, what other factors, apart from price, influence our demand for pieces of fried chicken? Well, according to our demand equation, factors might include taste, income, the number of other potential buyers, the price of related goods, and numerous other factors. Let's first see how a change of income might affect demand. I'm quite a big guy, so if I had more income, I'd definitely be eating more chicken. I need my KFC fix, then I just buy the little, like, that meal in the box or the streetwise or whatever. But if I had more income, then I could get the whole bucket and I could just sit in the whole bucket. It would be amazing. And, and sometimes we even just buy the chips and share them because we're students. But if we both had more income... If we income, had more income, we would each buy a packet of chips and a bucket. And, and the burger and the bucket and the mash with the gravy. Yeah. From this, we can see that a positive relationship exists between income and the demand for pieces of fried chicken. In economics, fried chicken is therefore classified as a normal good, because demand increases as income increases. In other words, if you can afford more, you'll buy more. This is true for most goods, but as always, there are exceptions. There are some things which you'll actually buy less of if your income increases. These are called inferior goods, and demand for these goods goes down instead of up as income increases. But what is an inferior good? I stopped drinking the cheap wine that I drink every weekend. OK, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's get back to the table for normal goods and how the behaviour of households changes when their income increases. We'll start with the market demand table which already tells us, given the current income of households, how many fried chicken pieces they intend to purchase at any price. Now, assuming that the income of households increases, what would happen to the quantity of fried chicken pieces demanded at a price of 7 rand? As we've seen, if your average household can afford to buy more fried chicken pieces, they will. So let's say their market demand increases to 16 pieces. And at 6 rand, with their higher income, they might now buy 22 pieces, and so on. And now, we do it graphically. Using the market demand curve we created earlier, we'll enter the new income information into our table and plot the new market demand curve. OK, do this one with me. OK, so at a price of 7 rand, the quantity demanded is now 16 pieces. At 6 rand, it's 22 pieces. At a price of 5 rand, 28 pieces. At 4 rand, 34 pieces. At 3 rand, it's 40. At 2 rand, 46. And finally, at 1 rand, the quantity demanded is 52. Combining the points, we have a new market demand curve, which we will call D1, D1. Let's interpret these curves. What are the similarities and differences between curve D1, D1 and curve D, D? Well, they're both downward sloping, but D1, D1 lies to the right of D, D. We can say that the curve has shifted to the right, and the cause of this rightward shift is the increase in household income, which leads them to demand more of the good at any price. In economics, we say there was an increase in the demand for fried chicken, and there is a very important distinction to note, because demand is different to the quantity demanded. In general, we can say that a rise in income causes an increase in overall demand for a normal good, and this can be represented as a rightward shift of the demand curve. Yeah, OK, but, but then does the law of demand still hold? Yes, because households still intend to buy more fried chicken if the price decreases and less if the price increases. The new demand curve, D1-D1, 
is still downward sloping, indicating that as the price drops, say from 6 rand to 4 rand, households demand a higher quantity of fried chicken, from 22 up to 34 pieces. A movement along the curve takes place. This distinction between a shift of the demand curve and a movement along the demand curve is extremely important. If it's not clear, hit that rewind button and check it out one more time. A movement along the curve reflects the impact of a change in the price of a good on the quantity demanded. A shift of the curve shows the effect of non-price factors on the demand curve. Understanding this difference will make your study of demand in our economy that much easier. As a general rule, we can now state that any factor other than the price that increases the demand for a product is represented by a rightward shift of the demand curve, while any factor other than price that decreases the demand for a product can be represented by a leftward shift of the demand curve. Now that we know the difference between a rightward and a leftward shift of the demand curve, see what other factors you can list that will also cause a shift of the demand curve. And we'll come back and see how you did. We asked you to identify some of the factors that would cause a shift in the demand curve, either to the left or to the right. Let's see what you came up with. An increase in taste and preferences for a product will cause an increase in the demand for the product, so the demand curve shifts to the right. The same thing happens when the number of potential customers increases. More is demanded at each price and the demand curve shifts to the right. But the opposite happens if the income declines. At each price, less is demanded and the demand curve shifts to the left. Over the course of your life, shifts in demand for all sorts of products take place all the time. It's a never-ending cycle. With an understanding of how these factors work, you will be able to analyse and understand shifts in the market and even predict future changes you'll be able to make informed decisions regarding your consumption habits and investment and learn to make the most of your own finances. So our students are starting to show a growing understanding of many of the factors that would cause a shift in demand. But not all of them. None of them brought up the price of related goods, factor PG in our formula, and how that affects demand. To explain the impact of a change in the price of related goods, we must again make the distinction between a change in demand and a change in quantity demanded. Or, in other words, we must know what causes a shift of the demand curve and what causes a movement up and down or along the demand curve. So, to test your understanding, true or false. A decrease in the price of a product increases the demand for a product. That sounds right to me. Um, at a lower price, I intend to buy more and therefore the demand is higher. No, the statement is wrong. And our student is confusing a change in demand with a change in quantity demanded. Remember what we learned from our market demand curve for fried chicken. A change in price can only cause a movement up or down the curve. If the price drops from 6 rand to 4 rand, the quantity demanded moves from 18 to 30. That's a movement along the curve. A change in price alone cannot cause a shift in the overall demand for a product. Other factors have to come into play for that to happen. Let's look at this further. With any given change in price, we have a corresponding change in quantity demanded. But we still know what quantity of fried chicken would likely to be bought at 2 rand, 5 rand or at 7 rand. By looking up and down the curve, we can still work out what amount households will be demanding at each price. As long as we can work out with this single curve what quantity people intend to purchase at any given price, then overall demand hasn't changed. and We can trust in the simple, predictable relationship between price and quantity demanded. 
change in demand takes place when you intend to buy different quantities than before at each price. And that's not caused by a change in price. It's caused by a change in any of the non-price factors such as income, tastes, number of prospective buyers, the price of related goods and so on. See if you can explain why the following statement is incorrect. High petrol prices have led to a decreased demand for petrol. No, the quantity of petrol demanded will decrease with a rise in price, but there isn't a change in the overall demand relationship. We can still work out how much is demanded at each price. For a decrease in demand, or change in demand to have taken place, we would have to have seen a different quantity demanded at any given price. Now that would be a shift of the curve. And why the following is correct. An increase in the number of cars on our roads has led to a higher demand for petrol. Well, this is a non-price factor that's changed. At each price now, more petrol is demanded than before. A new demand curve is then formed, still indicating the amount of petrol potential buyers are willing and able to purchase at different prices. Until one of the other factors comes into play again, we'll only see movements along the new curve with changes in price. The last common factor affecting the market demand curve that we need to cover is the price of related goods, or PG. Related goods can either be substitutes, a good that can be used in the place of another good to satisfy a certain want, or complements, which are used with another product to help satisfy a want. Let's try to identify a couple of examples. Substitutes. I don't mind fried chicken pieces or chicken burgers. Tea or coffee? Mutton or beef? I'll drink Coke or Fanta. McDonald's or Nando's? What would happen if the price of one substitute goes up while the other stays the same? Well, it's pretty obvious. If chicken burgers went on a half-price sale, you'd probably switch and eat more burgers and fewer pieces of fried chicken. So, very simply, that's an introduction to substitute goods. But what are complements or goods that complement each other? I drink vodka with lime. Peanut butter and jam. Mm. I use my cell phone with airtime. Fish with chips. Petrol in a car. A CD player with CDs. And what would happen to the demand for milk if the price of coffee went up? If the price of coffee increases, I'll drink less coffee. Therefore, I'll use less milk. So the price of coffee affects how much milk is used? Yeah. Let's do this with demand curves. To understand this section, it's important that you distinguish between a movement along the demand curve, indicating a change in the quantity demanded, and a shift in the demand curve, which is caused by a change in other non-price factors and is referred to as a change in demand. Let's look at substitutes first by assuming that households regard fried chicken pieces and chicken burgers as substitutes. Diagram A shows the demand for fried chicken and in diagram B the demand for chicken burgers. What would happen in diagram B if chicken burgers went on sale and the price decreased from, say, 12 rand to 9 rand? According to the law of demand, a drop in the price of chicken burgers will cause an increase in the quantity demanded, say from 16 to 20, resulting in a movement along the market demand curve for chicken burgers. And since chicken burgers and fried chicken pieces are substitutes, Households will tend to buy chicken burgers in the place of fried chicken pieces. If you used to eat fried chicken pieces every Wednesday night, a new sale on chicken burgers might cause you to switch from fried chicken to chicken burgers. So households now buy less fried chicken at each price and the demand curve shifts to the left. Overall, the demand for fried chicken falls. At a price of 7 rand, the quantity demanded drops from 12 to 8 and at a price of 2 rand it drops from 42 to 38, all because households have switched to chicken burgers. So, a change in the price of one substitute causes a change in overall demand of another substitute. A movement along the demand curve of one substitute causes a shift in the demand curve for the other substitute.
Let's see what happens in the case of complements, using the example of cell phones and airtime. In diagram A, we've got the demand curve for cell phones, and in diagram B, the demand curve for airtime vouchers. Let's see what happens if the price of cell phones drops from, say, 450 to 250 rand. As the price of cell phones drops, the quantity demanded increases, and we get a downward movement along the demand curve for cell phones. So, households now buy more cell phones. How will this affect the demand for airtime? Well, as more cell phones are being used, more airtime is required, and the demand for airtime increases. At each price, the demand for airtime is now greater than before, and the demand curve for airtime shifts to the right. And what can we conclude from this? As the price of one complementary good decreases, the demand for the other rises. So again, a movement along one demand curve causes a shift of the other demand curve. To sum up what we've learned about demand, we're going to take a brief look at how expected prices might influence the market demand for fried chicken pieces. Let's assume that we expect the price of fried chicken pieces to decrease in three days' time. How will that affect your current demand for fried chicken pieces? You'll probably tell yourself to hold off buying today because in three days' time you can spoil yourself. In other words, your current demand will decrease. Now, is this a shift or a movement along the curve? Well, the prices haven't changed yet, but at each price less is now demanded. So we have a leftward shift of the curve. Let's assume it's announced that the price of petrol is to rise by 10% next week. How will this news affect the behaviour of consumers? You'll find that generally, people will rush out to fill up before the increase comes into effect. Yes, their current demand for petrol will increase, and at the same price, a higher quantity of petrol is demanded, so petrol stations will be really busy for the next week before the petrol price rise takes effect. Today, more petrol is demanded at the same price, so the current demand for petrol shifts to the right. And what about demand after the petrol price goes up? Well, the same rules apply. The higher price leads to a lower quantity demanded, and a movement back up along the curve takes place. The lower quantity demanded is caused by an increase in the price of petrol, and not by any of the other factors. Remember, all we're doing is using economic terms to understand economic events that happen all around us. Don't be afraid of using these tools. Practice them in your everyday experiences, whether it's the next time you're at the supermarket, evaluating which airtime package to take, or whether to purchase a video contract. You'll soon be on the road to understanding how the market economy works and how best to take decisions in this environment. Also, you'll develop some of that fundamental knowledge that will help you maximise and maintain your own wealth. The next part of this journey takes us to the supply curve and then onto how demand and supply curves interact to establish prices in the market. <laughs>